Praise the Lord and good morning everybody. This is part two of a, a short playlist about order in the home that will be part of another playlist on this channel called uh, Marriage and Divorce or, or Godly Womanhood, something like that. I'll put the link for the playlist in the description box. So on this channel we address many things that pertain to Christian women. It is a channel for Christian women. And my name is Abby Elizabeth for those of you who don't know me. Today I want to talk to you, my sisters, about order in the home and how to create an orderly household. And in part one of this series, which if you haven't seen it yet, the link for that is in the description box underneath the video. If you haven't seen that yet, I urge you to go over there and, and watch that first. It's only about 20 minutes long. So this part of this series where I'm talking about order in the home is about practical tips for having an orderly household. So the woman, as we spoke in the last video, was made to be a suitable servant unto her husband. And this is a very big job. And the first thing I would say about this big job is that when we're doing our job, we don't have time to be meddling in our husband's job. So the husband is made to be the protector of the family, the provider, the one who provides food, shelter, uh, and, and guides the house in terms of spiritual guidance, the moral decision maker, as it were, the leader of the family. And the woman is made to guide the house. The woman is made to be in charge of the household. So it's a very big job. And if we're doing what God appointed us to do, we don't have time to have a career. We don't have time to, to be doing things like looking at our husband with criticism. Rather, if we're doing what God called us to do, we're going to be busy with that. And we will be unto our husband a precious jewel, more precious than rubies. So when we live this way, whether or not our husband is in the faith, we will be very precious unto our husband. And that will be a testimony unto him if he is not in the faith of Jesus Christ. So, as was related in the last video, the woman is made to be the vessel for the seed. But that is not all that she is. She is called to be a servant in her husband's house. Or she's called to take care of the house and the children if her husband is not with her or if she doesn't have a husband. And if she's a single woman living in her father's house, she's called to be a servant in her father's house. And if for some reason she is unmarried, does not have children, and is not living in her, hus her father's house, she is called to be a servant in the body of Christ as a Christian woman, a servant in the body of Christ, doing things to take care of the house of God, and she would prepare her herself, her heart for marriage by learning the things that women do in marriage. Now, she doesn't marry. These things are still very useful in the body of Christ. So I'm going to list of the few, a few of the things that a woman does in her daily work. So she organizes the house. She does things to get provisions into the house using funds that are provided to her by her father or her husband or that she's earned herself as a single woman. She takes the things that her husband has provided for her and uses them wisely. She uses discretion in these things. And she tries to make decisions that are prudent so that her husband's wealth can be increased. If she doesn't have a husband, she would still do this for the benefit of her children. And anyone who is a servant in the house of God wants to be prudent and wise in the way that we're doing things. So, for example, say you're a single woman and you, you're a servant in, in uh, the body of Christ. Maybe you might be assisting a, an elder's wife with her many children and learning how to care for children and care for a house by being a servant unto her and also in his house. That's one way that this can manifest. But for the sake of ease of conversating about this, I want to focus on a woman who is married. And those of us who are Christians who are, for whatever reason, we're not with a husband, we can still apply these principles. 
So these are some of the things a, a Christian woman does. She guides the house. She gets provisions into the house. She makes things. She makes food. She also plants seeds. She gardens. She might make clothing. She might knit things. She might knit sweaters. She might weave various fabrics. She might make certain things for, for covering the bed, such as quilts. She might make pillows. She might make head coverings. Some of these things she might sell because there's nothing wrong with a woman selling things to increase the wealth of her husband's household. But she is a keeper at home, and her primary job is to keep the house so that it's orderly and clean and a place where people can consider the things of God without chaos. Now, when we're doing this, we have to first recognize that God's house has a system. If you read in the Old Testament about the tabernacle or about the temple, you see that things were placed in a certain place and not everything was just anywhere it happened to land. So in, in marriage and in the family, when a woman's running the house, she would recognize that there should be a place for everything and also that there should be a time for everything. And these two things are very, very important. Now, the first part I want to address is the system. The system is we need to know who does what. Say we have six children, just for an example here. We have a husband and we have six children and we're trying to run a house and it's chaotic. It's a mess. Nobody knows where anything is. We're always trying to keep up and we're exhausted. Well, that can be remedied. And I'm about to tell you how it can be remedied. People need to know who does what, where things go, and when things happen. Who does what, where things go, and how things happen. Everything needs to have a place and a time in order for there to be order. So we need to have a system, and the system would begin with planning. No system can exist unless somebody thinks about the system that they want to have. So a routine is created by someone, this would be the woman, the wife, creating a system of time in her daily activities so that things can happen in an orderly and a timely way. The first way she would do this, this planning, is to plan days for activities. So certain days for activities. So I'm going to list what I think, what, uh, having some experience with this, are good ways to order the days. One day for planning and creating a system. One day for looking at how things are and making plans, such as grocery lists, compiling, uh, creating order, putting things where they need to go, maybe arranging furniture or arranging to get the appropriate furniture into the house. So one day for planning. And even if you've been living in a house for 10 years, you still need to do this. So as we go, we refine our system. So for example, we want to plan a way for things to be better in the house than they already are. But if we're in a state where there is no order in the house, we need to plan how the order is going to take place. This means where things go, when things are done, and who does what. So the first day might be for planning. The second day might be for shopping. Now the reason why planning comes first and then shopping is you're not going to know what you need unless you've looked around and seen what needs doing and what where supplies need to be replenished. The third day is delegation of responsibilities, delegation and dispensing of an allowance. So children who are in our house are subject unto us. As their mother we are in control of the children, and if we're not in control of them, and they're in control of us, then that needs to be rectified immediately. 
the woman should be in charge of the husband, of the of the children and she should be telling them what to do she should delegate unto every child a task and what i would say is that in this delegation it should not be one job per child so for example if you have a seven-year-old boy and you tell him his job is to take out the garbage and you have a five-year-old boy and you tell him that his job is to um, feed the dog then of course your older son is going to look at his brother's job and say hey this isn't fair i've got the dirty yucky job and he's got the fun job so we want to delegate tasks and rotate them so that everybody learns how to do everything because when we're bringing up children, part of what we're bringing them up to do is to know how to order their own house. Now, this is true for male and female children. Just as a, a female child has to know how to tie her shoes, the same way a male child needs to know how to tie his shoes. So it is that a male child needs to know where his dirty socks go and where the ketchup is in the refrigerator. So we all need to learn these tasks and so that there should be a rotation of the various things that we delegate unto our children. Now, of course, a three-year-old is not able to bring out the garbage. And if we only have a three-year-old, then we should be taking out the garbage. And there is no woman in the world who wants to please God who's gonna command her husband to take out the garbage. It's part of taking care of the house. Now, I live alone, as most of you know, and I take out the garbage. So those of us who live alone, we recognize that being in a family is, is often much better because many people mean that, that the tasks are lighter. And because the tasks are lighter, more can be accomplished. So a big family often has a big home. And for that reason, tasks need to be delegated everyone who contributes to the house should also have a certain amount of money given to them so that they can learn how to handle money children who are not given an allowance for for doing work in the home don't learn how to regulate themselves with money and then when they do get money they tend to make very foolish decisions about it it's far better to teach your children how to handle two, a $2 allowance when they're three years old than to teach a 17-year-old that he shouldn't be gambling on the internet, for example. So we begin by teaching our children in the order that we create. And this is part of loving our children and loving our husband. Because as a woman, we are a servant in our husband's house. And these tasks are very, very valuable. Of course, these days, people have been trained to think that these things happen in school while the woman goes out to be a wage slave alongside her husband. And this is wrong. When the government teaches your children things, then the government will train your children to serve the government. And when you're a Christian woman, you train your children to serve God. And this is true whether or not your husband is in the faith or not. It is your ministry to order the house and to raise up the godly seed. And this is true also if you're a single mom, which is much harder, but these principles still apply. Another day it could be for cooking and baking and the preparation of food. So cooking and baking and the prefer preparation of food would take place after shopping day, of course, because if you don't have supplies, then you aren't able to adequately cook. Now, I just want to add here that if you don't have this kind of order, every single time you think about cooking something, you're going to have to go to the store. Every time you think about what the, you know, you, you want to wash the floor, for example, and you can't because you need floor soap. And so you've got to run to the store. And this is not a wise use of time. So again, we would have a planning day a shopping day, a delegation day, a cooking and baking day. And then we would have a cleaning garbage and washing the clothes day. Because all the things that, that we did in the cooking and the baking 
and the shopping have now created some disorder and a mess and the house needs to be cleaned up. So for example, you go to the store and you buy things that are in packages and then these packages go in the trash. Well, naturally the trash should be taken out the next day. So when we're creating a system, we, we want to look to what makes sense. So it doesn't make sense to do the planning the day after you do the cleaning or to do the shopping before you do the planning. And that's why I'm suggesting this particular order. The next day would, and of course, in the cleaning and the garbage taking out day is the wash day, the laundry day. And when we do these things, we already have soap for the floor and soap for the washing machine and, and so on and so forth. The next day would be to, to put things where they need to go. So we've, we've done the cooking, we, we've done the cleaning, we've done the washing, and now there's a day of creating order, making sure everything is where it needs to go. I know of a truth that when you have a big family, sometimes it's hard to do these things. And what I would say to you first about this is that as we go through every day, there should be a certain amount of putting away every single day. So it doesn't make sense to go to the grocery store and not put the ketchup in the refrigerator when you get home. The ketchup should be in the same place in the refrigerator. You should have a system. So not only do you have a big system for the days, but you have micro systems and places where things go. Where things go, who does what, how things are done. So people should know what it is that is expected of them by delegation. So for example, I might have, say I have six children, which I don't, but let's just say I have six children. Maybe this way, week, it's my eldest son's job to take out the trash. And the next son down, it's his job to, to uh, mow the lawn or shovel the sidewalk if it's winter time. That that would rotate. But when we get home from the store, everyone should have a task as well. It's not that mommy is the maid is that mommy is in charge of the house and the children are part of the house and they learn to value themselves and have good self-respect by contributing and being important to the house so when we get home from the store it's not time for the kids to all be running around the house and and, and making all kinds of noise while mommy's trying to cook and clean and make dinner Rather, some of the children might put the food that goes in the refrigerator in the refrigerator or what goes in the freezer in the freezer or in, in the dry goods place, the dry goods place or the cleaning area, the cleaning stuff or the laundry soap in the laundry room if you have one or under the sink if you don't have one. I don't have one, so it goes under the sink. But again, we want to know where things go, who does what, and children feel very good and very important when they're given a job. So we want to give jobs to our children on every single day. So when we're planning, maybe we're going to ask the children and our husband as well, certainly, what they might like to eat that week. So perhaps our husband is about to go out into the field or he's about to go to work. And we might ask him, what do you think would be good meals this week? What would you like to have? And he might say, mm, we haven't had roast beef in a while. Could we have pot roast this week? And so, of course, a, a good godly wife wants to please her husband. she say, yes, sir, of course, I'd be happy to make that. Or maybe he'll say something, don't make that macaroni cheese again. It really bound up my stomach and I didn't feel good after I ate it. And she'd say, yes, sir, I understand. I won't be making that again. So first and foremost, she would want to please her husband in, in the planning process. But she doesn't need him to be part of the planning process that she has with the children. So the planning day, which comes before the shopping day, would be to make a menu and to figure out what needs doing in the house. Maybe we need some hooks to hang things in in one of the rooms. Maybe we need some shelf liner paper. And children are really good sometimes at pointing out what is needed. 
but the woman's in charge of this situation and she has the ability and the right and the responsibility to say, no, we don't need that, not this week. Because part of this is the budget. So on the planning day, we look at how much money we have as well. We make a budget and we say, okay, this week I have this much for the household. How am I going to prioritize what people need? And that is the reason why we have a whole day for planning. It's about look, making lists. And what, one thing that is important to do when making lists is you don't necessarily want to buy everything at the same place because if you do, you're going to waste money. Some things are cheaper online. Some things are better bought at a hardware store or at a home, a home goods store or at a pet goods store, or a farm store, or, or a grocery store, or, or what have you. So we want our list, when we're making our list on planning day, to have things that we get at the grocery store, things we get at the farm store, things we get at the pet store. And then, when we're planning, we would say, okay, it makes sense first to pick up the cat food, because the cat food's not going to go bad in the car, and buy the perishable foods last. And so we would also create an itinerary or a plan and the order in which we would do, do things. So the making of lists and the making of plans is very important in terms of shopping, but it's also important in terms of the home. So if we need to, to look at something in the house, say that needs improvement, maybe the baby's room doesn't have uh, space for the baby's diapers yet. So we need to figure out how to do that. Maybe it's about getting some shelving into that room or a small dresser or, or maybe just some baskets where we can put things. But when we're looking at what the family needs and what the household needs, we want to listen to what people see as a need and make decisions according to the budget that we have and use prudence and discretion in where we shop so that we make the most of what it is that our husband has allowed us to have for the week. So in this system, first we have things according to the day. And then in each day, there is an order. So I would say that this would be the schedule, the schedule of the day. So of course, we don't, we don't prepare breakfast before we've gotten dressed. These things are common sense, but of a truth, many of us don't know it. So what we want to do as a Christian woman when we get up in the morning is first we want to pray and spend a little time in the Word of God, even if it's just a little bit. Then we want to shower and get dressed, and then we make breakfast and get the children up and so forth. And that means sometimes that we have to get up early before everybody else, but that is part of of being a servant. A servant orders their day, not according to what's comfortable, but according to what's necessary and prudent and good for the people that we're serving. So of course we would need to help our husband with whatever he has need of before he goes to work. Maybe we need to prepare his lunch. Maybe we need to iron his shirt. Every household is different. But when we're doing these things, if we're doing them in the right order and we have the same order every day, then we don't have to think about it every single day. So we won't have a situation where we're standing there in our nightgown trying to fry eggs and our husband comes in and he says, where's my socks? And all the socks are dirty. Because if things are done in the right order, laundry day is done on a day to make sure that everybody has clean socks. And when we do the laundry on laundry day, we put the socks in the sock drawer. And so nobody has any trouble finding them. And we train our children where their sock drawer is. And when we do the laundry, the children can put their own socks in their own sock drawer. So the children aren't there to, to play and make a mess and to run chaotically around the house making all kinds of noise while mommy runs after them with a mop. Rather, the children are there to learn how to be godly people. And while play is good, and there's a time and a place for play, there is much fun and pleasure to be had and playfulness in work. And so work and play really should not be separate things as they do in the world. 
children take a lot of pleasure in following after the things that are important in the house and being a contributor to the house. So rather than a little girl playing with dolls, it's far better if she's helping mommy with the baby. If she's helping herself, she's learning how to cook and take care of a house. That A young man might be learning about how a house is ordered, how to mow a lawn, how, how to weed a garden. And not that girls can't do these things, because they can and they should. They can and they should, because we should all be able to function in a world by ourselves without having someone to help us. If we have needs that we can't meet ourselves, we're more likely to fall into something that is a marriage of necessity rather than a marriage of love. So we want, when we're marrying someone, we want to marry them because we respect them, we want to follow them, and we want to love them. We don't want to marry somebody for reasons like getting a green pass or, or a visa or, or for uh, the reason of um, not having to work at, at the job we're working at. We want to marry a man because we've made ourselves to be a very good and able servant and we respect him and want to serve him in his house for the rest of our lives. So women need to learn how to do things like turn a screwdriver so that she doesn't have to ask her husband every time the door is a little loose. She can handle these things. And so it is that a little boy needs to know how to put his socks away. He will be a better husband if he knows how to put his own socks away or how to put things in the hamper or how to help with with things around the house. So I hope that this is clear to you. We do want to teach our children gender roles. We don't want to teach our, ch our little boy to be a little girl, and we don't want to teach our little girl to be a little boy. But children need to learn certain things, and all of these things are important. For example, a young man who's been brought up properly might get his own house before he takes a wife. Well, if he doesn't know how to do laundry or cook, he's in big trouble. He's going to be eating at restaurants and hiring someone to do the laundry and wasting his money when he could be building up his household and preparing to take a wife. Glory be to God. So, when we're talking about the, the schedule of a day, the schedule of a day should be pretty much the same thing. It shouldn't be rigid. None of these things should be rigid. We don't want to become like taskmasters or dictators in our house where the, the system and the schedule is more important than the people. The system and the schedule are there to serve the people. So just as Jesus Christ said that the Sabbath was made for the man and not man for the Sabbath, so it is that when we create a schedule, it's for the benefit of people. It's for the order of the house, it's so people know what they're doing and where things go and who does what. But it's not done so that we can be a dictator in the house. Another thing, just so you know, it's always good to have a day every week for recreation and rest, where the whole family can gather together and enjoy one another. If the father, if you have an, a, a husband in your house, has a day off, that would be a day for the family to spend time together, to to enjoy one another, maybe to go on a picnic or maybe to, to go to the beach or to the woods or something for the whole family to do an activity together. In this way, the family can come together one day a week and have recreation and rest. And again, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is something that was commanded unto the people of Israel for their benefit to honor God. God's people in the time of Jesus Christ, in the time of the new covenant, what we do is we serve God every day and we cease from our own work. So we do things God's way rather than our own way. And we train up our children in the way that they should go. So that means they can have just as much fun helping mom in the garden as they would playing in a sandbox. And so when we're teaching our children the right way to live, we're teaching them that we serve God and one another every single day. We love one another as we love God. This is the whole of the law. But taking a day off once a week for the family to have recreation would probably depend on when our husband has a day off from work. 
or if we don't have a husband, we would choose a day. It doesn't matter what day you choose. It matters, though, that it happens. Because when we're working all the time, we're always running around and never stopping to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Then we forget to be grateful and we start to become harried and worn out and miserable. So these are principles. These are godly principles. So everyone in the family should feel like a part of what happens in the house every single day. So the children might help put the food away when you go home from grocery shopping or after a meal. They might put things in the refrigerator. They might wipe off the table. They might help, of course, with food preparation. They might help to chop or to peel or, or to sort or to scoop. They might help to stir. They might watch the time so things don't burn. But everybody should be part of the family and what the family needs and does. And that way, you have no one off in a corner by themselves doing something they shouldn't do. We know what the children are doing because we are in control of the household. That is the woman's job. So the thing is, is that in these things, we teach as we go. So children can learn how to count when they're chopping vegetables. How many slices of pepper do we have here? Right? Oh, okay, how do we put together a recipe? We can teach many things like math and, and good science, like how God made the world, as we talk and converse doing these things. If we are doing things in an orderly way, where a routine, so breakfast happens at breakfast time, lunch happens at lunch time, bed happens at bedtime, people get up in the morning at the same time, routine, then there's not chaos and we don't have to think about those things. Then our mind is free to do higher things and the things of God and doing things with the children like reading the scripture to them at bedtime, teaching them how to pray, teaching them how it is that Christians live. The other thing I would say about this system is that you should have places in your home where things go. So, for example, when we're looking at the system that we want to create that's orderly, it doesn't make any sense to have the ironing board in a place where the laundry is not happening. It's better to have the ironing board if you have one. I personally don't have one. I fold things when they come out of the dryer. But sometimes if our husband's shirts need to be ironed, there are things if we're sewing need to be ironed. The ironing board should be set up in a place where we, where we use it. So we don't have to drag it out every single time we use it. The laundry soap should be in a place where it's convenient for doing the laundry. And the dish soap, the same way. The towels should be near the bathroom or in the bathroom, as should the toilet paper. Cleaning supplies should be under the sink, because most cleaning takes place with a sink. The mop and the bucket should be in a place where they're not in the middle of the floor. The vacuum cleaner should be someplace where it's put away but easily accessible when needed. Cooking utensils should be easy to access and easy to put away. For example, I put mine on hooks on the side of my refrigerator, so that when, which is right next to the stove. So when I'm cooking, I just reach right over and grab the spatula or the spoon or what have you that I need. The other thing is, is that the, in every day there's a, a certain amount of things that happen that we want to continue to keep the order that we've created. So after we're, we've cooked, we don't leave all the dirty dishes in the sink and the food on the table. We put the food away, we wash the dishes, and we put them away. The children, of course, would be part of this. When we do this, and we do this as a matter of routine, and we have a system, there will be order and peace in the house. When creating a system in the house, we would think about how to improve things all the time. There's always improvements that can be made. So we might think, hmm, you know, that shower curtain there doesn't really keep the water from coming out at the bottom. I might want to get a little bit longer one. Or maybe I'll make a longer one. Or maybe I'll make the one I have longer. So that would go on the list. And what I do, and what I recommend that you do, is that when you think of something like that, 
you go to the refrigerator or the bulletin board or the whiteboard where the list is and you jot it down so that you don't forget it. And then on planning day, you can sort and organize and plan accordingly. So I hope this message has been helpful to you, my sisters. Please know I remain here for you. And may the word of God bless you as you continue in it and walk in godly order and understand the beautiful role and work that God has given unto women. This kind of work is pleasant. It's safe. It's something wherein we can take a lot of pleasure. We can choose things like colors. We can educate our children and spend time with our family members. We can cook pleasant food and grow pleasant food. And we can do these things knowing that they honor God. When we are walking in godly or order and doing the things that God made the woman for, we will find health and happiness and peace. And our home will be a place where the word of God can abide. So our husband will have time when he gets home from work to share the word of God with the children. We can make him happy and comfortable and all will go well. But we have to remember that God's order and God's way is better than the Marxist, feminist, satanic way. We don't try to tell our people, our husband what to do. We don't lord it over him. Rather, we walk according to what God commanded us to do. We respect and obey our husband as much as we can. And we love him. And if we see that there's some place in his walk where he's not obedient unto God, then we pray for him. We pray for him. And if he asks us to do something, we do it with happiness because we are part of his house. And that is a beautiful thing to be. I hope this is helpful to you, my sisters. And may you have a blessed day as you consider these things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.